Hey everybody, Icy Cat here. Today we're going to check out the canal map. This has two separate buildings in it, along with multiple floors of elevation. If you find yourself getting a little turned around and confused as to where to go and what to do, then you're going to want to check out our walkthrough next. Let's begin by taking a look at the attacker spawn positions. The first one will be the sailboat location. You'll come out here and you'll have immediate access to the camera up on top. You'll have either a ramp or these stairs that will come up. And this will put you closest to the Coast Guard building directly in front of you. And you can cross over for the control center. The next spawn location is the floating dock area. And when you come up these stairs, you're going to be able to either go up these stairs, continue forward or come through here. And when you come through this section, you'll need to be careful of a few things. You've got your camera up here. You also have this overwatch area from the control center, and they can sight you in on that position while you come through if you're not careful. The third position is the construction site spawn. When you come over this hill, you're going to have immediate access to the camera on this side, and the control center building is a closer structure. You'll have the same problem here of coming through if you're not careful of these windows. You can get spawn camped as you come over if you're not careful. If you want to minimize your exposure to that, you can come around the side of this building instead and make your approach from this end. This particular position will give you lots of great locations if you have somebody with a longer range scope or maybe using glass. You can get on top of this building. And that's going to give you a great sight line into the server room directly across here with a little bit of cover. Likewise, you can come over to this position here and engage these side areas if you want to. Down below, you have some access to the kitchen, which is next to the maps area here through this window. A better position to do that from though is right here because you can engage the window here and then if you need to you can just step behind the cover that this affords you. When starting from the first sailboat position if you come over here you're going to get access to this first camera immediately off the exterior front lawn. Our next camera position is going to be the lock gate exterior camera right over here. This overlooks the corner of the Coast Guard office and shows you down the alley as well as over to the side. When starting in the construction site spawn area, we'll find our next camera just coming over the rise and that will be on this pole overlooking this whole general vicinity. For the interior cameras, we're going to start with the control center. Both of the cameras will be in similar positions. This first one is right next to the maps room in the corner office over by the stairwell. Right above it, coming up the stairs here, we'll have our next one in the corner. This will be overlooking the area of the control room hallway and give coverage to the stairs as well. Our next two internal cameras are going to be in the Coast Guard building. Coming through this front hall section, we're going to have it in the corner here. This overlooks both the skywalk and the hallway outside of the objective room. Our final camera position is going to be in the Coast Guard boat supply hallway. When you come right down the stairs, it is up on the ceiling. You're not going to get a line of sight on it until you clear this beam, and then it is right up there. As you make your way through the buildings, you're going to want to be aware of the trapdoors that will grant you access to different parts of the building depending on how you come at it. The first one is going to be located here in the second floor Coast Guard office. When you breach this one, you will gain access to the boat supply area down below, and dropping down here will give you lots of access to this immediate objective position. The next trapdoor is also going to be located on the second floor of the Coast Guard hallway. It's here in the lounge area. Breaching this position will grant you access to the basement area. This is the locker room section, which is directly across from the objective area for the Coast Guard basement. Your remaining trapdoors are all going to be located on top of the control room tower. The first one is located over by the console position above the maps room. Breaching this will grant you access downstairs to the maps room section. Usually there's a bomb location here. The next trapdoor is the room next door. This will be the server room. If you breach this one, you will fall down into the kitchen area, which is on the other side of the maps room. Also on the third floor control room, we're going to have the next trap door in this wooded area here. This is opposite the consoles where we were before. And breaching this will bring us down into the security room. This will grant us access to the other side of the maps room where we were from the first position. And you can come through one of these walls. 
let's take a look at some of our defensive spawns. When selecting bomb as a defender, you can choose the control room and the server room access point. This is going to place bomb A in the control room, and bomb B is going to be over in the server room in this section. I've already got some barricades on some doors, and I recommend going ahead and reinforcing these back panels here and putting either some batteries or some signal jammers on them. You can reinforce these panels as well, or something you can do is you can leave an open hole in case they come through here, or maybe reinforce this one wall and then leave a murder hole maybe down on the floor here, and then you can sort of get them as they come up the stairs and try to come through here, or if they breach through that window. Another thing I find useful is putting a breaching charge, or I'm sorry, a nitro cell on the wall here. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you fast response between these two sections. So you can respond to either bomb A or B as needed. The next position we want to take a look at is the map's office. If you have bombs in here, your bomb A is going to be in the projector room and bomb B is going to be over here in the cafeteria. This is a pretty good area to defend, but you need to be wary of your trap doors and your windows. So make sure you use castle barricades on some of those windows and you can overwatch from one area into the next pretty effectively. Make sure you put up your reinforcement panels on this wall, uh, as well as having another one perhaps here. Another critical position is going to be this wall here, since they can come through from the other side pretty easily. At least on this one, they'll hit your second panel with that not opening into the room. And you may even want to reinforce this one, although that's not necessary. What will be critical though is sending roamers up to reinforce your trap doors. You have one above bomb A and you have another one in the kitchen right above bomb B. So reinforce those trap doors in the server room as well as in the control room. The third spawn option you have for bomb defusal is going to be in the Coast Guard office as well as the holding room. This is probably the most challenging to lock down. You're going to have these walls here that you're going to want to reinforce so they're not breached from the back hallway. You're also going to want to have both of these walls here reinforced and signal jammed from the front hallway on this side. You're also going to have this wall in this section to reinforce because that is open from the Coast Guard hallway on the other end. What I recommend doing is not worrying about reinforcing this wall so much, but go ahead and throw a nitro cell on this wall and connect these two regions together. Then if you want to, you could put some reinforcement panels here, but definitely a couple here. So what that's going to do is, as an attacker, if you come through this door, you're immediately going to be engaged on a line of sight through here. And you're going to have fast response between position A and B by doing so. So again, as a defender, you know, you've got that line of sight to protect right there. Plus, you can hop in quick if somebody sneaks around the side. You can uh, even do that from back here behind this wall to give you even more cover yet. And this will also protect you from the side position. The windows you're going to want to be careful of, so maybe castle barricades would be handy there with signal jammers as well. There's a lot that can happen in this room though, so you need to be careful. Most of the other objective types can be found in the same positions as the bombs, but one that's different is down here in the boat supply area. You'll have either a hostage or possibly a secure area zone down here that's different from the bomb defusal types. And in this room, you have a lot of wooden walls to work with. You've got this back closet here. You can open this area up and have line of sight if they come through this door on the side. Or you can reinforce this and completely protect it. Sending a roamer upstairs to protect this trap door would be pretty essential. Otherwise, they can drop right into the room or throw grenades in. You'll also want to watch this back door here through this wall uh, you can probably reinforce that would be my recommendation you'll want to reinforce this wall because this is coming down the stairs and you'll run right into that otherwise they'll just have a perfect line of sight if you're not careful don't waste your time on this back wall uh, go ahead and allow you to control this zone as well and what you're going to want to do is maybe put a couple of reinforcement panels on here, or you could even leave one open and just get an angle on the stairs. That way, as they come down, you can sort of get a line on them. This wall is gonna be critical. Put panels here, 
make sure they're signal jammed or shocked or something like that to prevent a breach in that section. Go ahead and put up some barricades here to block off the lounge room trap door from going into the locker room. And then you're just going to have to worry a little bit about this back section here. A signal jammer can be good here to stop any drone approach, but you can also put a deployable shield here, maybe electrify that so if they have to vault over it, they get shocked trying to get into the room. Or you can put other kinds of traps in this area as well. Any general walkthrough for the map has to keep in mind the fact that this is a unique design. There's two separate buildings. We've got the Coast Guard structure on the left side here, and we have the Control Center tower on the right side. They're only connected by the skywalk in the center here. And when you approach a structure from the front, you'll need to be aware of the fact that they can come out through these windows and snipe you on the approach. Or we can come in through the front here of either building. The front entrance on that one is over here. Breaching through the front door, you need to be aware that we have these metal detectors. So when you come through, you're immediately going to make some noise that the enemy team is going to hear. If you don't want to go that way, you can go over to the side here, and this will take you through the archive hallway. Oftentimes, if the objective is in this next room, it'll be heavily fortified with uh, reinforcement panels in this section. This wall is breachable if you want to get through, and this is also where you'll have that camera position again. The back of the archive room will come into the Coast Guard office. There's usually an objective in here if you're playing a bomb defusal or anything like that. We'll have that trapdoor that we were talking about earlier. What you're going to want to do is try to figure out a way to come through some of these walls and really open it up for them. Across from the Coast Guard office, we have the lounge area where our other trapdoor was located. Defenders can sometimes get some line of sight on you from a couple of these windows. Or as an attacker, what you can do is knock these out and engage them through the other windows here. This works great with Glaz. If you have somebody that can breach those windows for you with charges and you can get some straight shots across. The back hall here is going to give you access to the holding room. This is really only useful. Sometimes there's a bomb in this position, but you can also get through this wall which will give you access to that radio room that we were just in a moment ago. The top of the building is an interesting thing to be used because you have the different heights of these buildings. So the roof of this structure is going to grant you level access to the third floor of the control room. And again, if you're Glaz or a character with an ACOG site, you can have somebody breach those for you, and then you'll have a nice line of sight into there. You do need to be careful of some of these side windows. If you really wanted to, you could also come on top of this smaller structure. And this will give you some angles into these other rooms that we were talking about before. You can also get some good line of sight to cover this small area here. Sometimes you'll get adventurous defenders that might like to come out of these uh, wooden panels or this door in this other section. And if you're up on top, you can maybe get the drop on them. This structure is sort of a utility area for accessing the roof. And if you come through here, this grants you access to the top stairwell. That's really all that's in this room. This comes out where we were before in the second floor hallway. And you can take it one floor further down to grant you access to the boat supply hallway. Oftentimes you'll have an objective in this section. We have the boat garage over here with all of our wooden walls that can be breached in many ways. This will give you access to the boat garage if you're coming through here. When you open up into this next section, uh, this is where you'll typically have one of your objectives in this room if they're on this lower portion. It's pretty segmented with these shelving units, which help kind of break the room up. This makes it a little hard for you to use a cluster charge in some sections of this room. If it's used on that half, this half will be protected and vice versa. So if you're going to place one, maybe putting it something more in the center so it has more of an even dispersion chance is more helpful. You do have this back closet back in this section here. You can't really do a whole lot you can come through this wall here and the ceiling is breachable. However, it has this odd ribbing that goes uh, in this direction. 
so it's hard for you to shoot down into it very effectively. This other half doesn't get utilized quite as much, but if you step through into the shower section, uh, you can get some line of sight into covering some things here. And our trap door from the lounge opens up here, as we were saying before, into this locker room area. This can be helpful for trying to gain access to the boat garage areas. Oftentimes they'll be more worried about that back hallway. If we come back up the stairs, we've got the skywalk, which connects the two buildings. This is off that main area where we came through. As a defender, if you wanted to be at these windows, you could kind of watch that approach as they come up those stairs over there and get the drop on them. Or if they came out the other approach as they cross from either section, you can kind of get them as they run across. Coming through here into the model room, you could also try to uh, get them on an approach here, but these cars are really going to obstruct your line of sight. So what this is going to be more useful for is maybe having some kind of overwatch on the longer hallway here as people come through. The security room will grant us access to the back side of these walls. There's not much that happens in this room, but it will give you access to some of these other sections. As we make our approach on the control center building, coming in on the ground level here, we're going to have access to this immediate back hallway. Well, on the side here, we have the cafeteria or kitchen area. You have located a bomb. You'll sometimes have objectives in here. This is pretty defensible as far as the exterior shell. There's not a lot of breachable walls unless you're coming through the other side here of the maps room. Uh, you do have to be wary of your windows as well as the trap door. The maps room itself is a very popular area as well. Any of these wooden floors can be breached. They are semi-breachable. Uh, if you put these down, you'll see we have the yellow light on there, which indicates we can get a partial breach. And if they're below you for any reason, you can get them there, but it's generally going to be more useful to shoot up using ash with that. You're also going to particularly want to watch, as mentioned before, this section here. Any of these windows can be shot out and then you can be fired on as you make your approach. You cannot drop down from the roof here. These uh, girders and satellite dishes prevent you from being able to repel down over the side. So you can't get up into here. About the only thing you can do is you could try to use Ash with her launcher and take out one of the windows that way. That's about the only way you're really going to be able to reach up there short of uh, shooting something with a longer range sight like an ACOG or perhaps using Glaz. The base of this building will open up into something of a parking garage structure. And this is the machine hallway and the loading dock. We are directly underneath the map room right now. And you'll notice that this entire section has these breachable ceiling tiles. As ash, you can fire your launcher up into any of the ceiling tiles here that have this texture on them. And you will open up these kinds of sight lines. You can also take these stairs up to the top. The third floor here is going to give you access to the control room hallway with the server room and the control room. We also have the back third floor hallway here. And let's start with the control room. So coming through here, we've got a connecting wall. You can breach this to get you access to either room. This is sometimes useful to do if you have bombs in these rooms because you can link your objective rooms and then go and respond quickly between the two rooms. The rooms are also connected by this central room, the electric room, and you can get through the back half of the rooms that way. The server room has a lot of windows for you to be aware of. You can shoot out on the approach if you're a defender or lots of breaching options if you're an attacker to come through. You do also have a window over here this looks out into the balcony area. If you're out here as an attacker, you can uh, make a breach point through here and still have the mobility to kind of move around without being tied to a line. Same thing through this window here, which will overlook the side of the control room. Or you can repel up on top. If you come over on this side here, you have this gap that you need to be careful of that you don't fall over. But what you can do is repel up onto the top here. And when you come over onto the other side, 
this is going to give you access to drop down and now we are above the skywalk you can also access this section by coming up through the other part of the building as we were showing before the back panel here is wood and can be breached so you can put any kind of a breaching charge on here and come through into this section you can likewise do the same on this section of the wall if you were to come through this door then you could do that over there as well back into the control room proper again none of these walls here are i'm sorry none of these floors are going to be breachable but over in this section we do have that trap door and we could open this up into the electronics room if we wanted to these windows, if taken out, will give a defender overwatch onto the construction site spawn as well as anybody repelling along this wall. And likewise, if you come over on the other side, you'll get overwatch on the floating dock if they come through this section. Any of these windows will also do a good job of checking out the roof directly across from you if you are dealing with glass or somebody sniping through the windows. You can also open up some good sight lines down here into the boat launch area, especially if you have Glaz in back and maybe Ash opening up that sight line, but you can see straight back into that next section. Our first set of exterior vents are going to be found in the forklift alley. We have one to the left here and one straight ahead of us. This first one will take us out into the boat crane area and you can go forward through that door. The other vent will take you into a very similar position. You're going to come through here and go down. This will put you into the interior of that same hallway on the other side of the door. And now we're inside the boat garage. Our next exterior drone position is going to be found over here in the parking alley on the exterior. Right below the area where you cross in, there's going to be a vent here. This will put you into the first floor of the control center stairs. And from there, it's a straight shot up to either the maps room or one more floor up to the server and control room. The final exterior drone position is going to be out here on the balcony. This is on the control center tower. If you come through here, this will put you into the hallway, which is right outside the server room. At the opposite end of this hallway, we'll come into the third floor exit hallway, and this one will take you into the control room proper. The next internal vent will be found in the security room on the second floor of the control center. Coming through here will give you a shortcut to get into the maps room area. Our final internal connecting vent is going to be found in the Coast Guard hallway on the second floor here. And coming through here will put you right into the radio room. When you're coming into an objective area with your drones, you're going to want to get them very quickly underneath anything you can. Or put them on top of any structures that you can. The more unexpected places you can put them, the better. That wraps up our coverage for the canal map. Next time I want to let you guys pick which one we're going to do, so let me know in the comments down below. Whichever one gets the most votes is the one that I'll do a walkthrough for next time. Additionally, during the month of December, I'm doing a giveaway for a digital download for a free copy of Rainbow Six Siege for the Xbox One only. Here's how to enter. For new subscribers, go ahead and type the word RECRUIT in all capital letters in the comments down below and tell me why you'd like a copy of the game as well as something you'd like to see me do on the channel but I don't want to forget about the loyal subscribers that have been with me for a while. So if you haven't enrolled yet, go ahead and comment with the word VETERAN in all capital letters, VETERAN, in the comments down below. Likewise, tell me why you'd like a copy of the game and something you'd like to see me do on the channel. I'll draw one veteran winner and one recruit winner, and there will be a 50-50 chance which one will get the prize. Be sure to keep an eye out, and if you get a contact, you'll win the copy of the free game. So if you want to win, make sure to like and subscribe to get your free copy of Rainbow Six Siege for the Xbox One. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.